Hi, this is part four of the battery monitor project series. I have already removed the old battery monitor. And let's go to the power room and we are going to install the equipment there on the wall. In the last two videos, the timeline has been a little bit disrupted because uh, I found out that the microcontroller which I plan to use was not capable of doing the job. And then I also found another issue which I had to work on. But this is all solved and with this video we are going to uh, stay now inside the timeline again. We will first install the shunt and then because it's very loud and uh, the light conditions in that room are not uh, very good, uh, I will spare you how to uh, put the box on the wall. Once everything is connected I will then show you. How everything is done. So what I'm going to do now is remove the negative cable from the breaker and install the shunt. And I want to do it while the inverter is still running because I don't want to power it down because of the cap. So I will just open up the screw and remove this very quickly and immediately put the wire on the screw here and the other one just uh, also connects to the breaker. So without uh, too much interruption, I think one second should be okay and still work without shutting down the, machine, the inverter. So let's try this. The load is removed from the inverter, so it's just trying to be very very quick. Uh, still holding the cable there. I take the shunt and now be very quick. And still running. There was a little light spark there, but it's okay. Still everything running. And it fits very, very perfectly. Okay, and that is it. Right, so this is how it looks like now. What I did not show you, what I did off camera, is I have added one push button here. So this one is there because I have uh, only a small LCD display and we need two pages to display all the information. By pressing the push button it will switch from page one to page two. The box is installed on the wall. Here, close look onto the shunt. The shunt is fitting very nicely here into the uh, cutout of the breaker. And all the screws, they fit it quite perfectly. So inside the box, we have our main board with the controller, Wi-Fi, analog to digital converter, watchdog, and the bug converter. And here is another Thing I had to experiment with uh, off camera so the current sensor I got uh, some upgrade there so what you see there on the small uh, PCB uh, connected to it is a filter why that filter is there and what it is for exactly that is subject of the next video okay so we have here the connection to battery bus voltage and the other one here, other wires are going to the shunt. Well, that's so far it and what we are doing next is we will connect the laptop to the controller and run some uh, small programs and acquire some raw data which we will then need for programming. So uh, let's do that now and uh, see what is going on. So this here is the Arduino IDE and the first we have to do is because we have uh, more than one I2C device in our uh, system 
we need to exactly know which addresses are these devices using. Some of the devices they are using standard uh, addresses but you never know if there is maybe a conflict with other ones. So there could be two modules which are using the same address or some I also don't know which address it, it has. So for that you can find at the examples and look at wire there you can find the, the sketch uh, which is called I2C scanner so I have opened that here and we are going to upload that now to the microcontroller to upload it we can open the serials uh, monitor and now you can see here The system have uh, found two devices. One is uh, 0x40 and the other one 0x48. 40 is known to be the standard address of the shunt uh, sensor. So 48, because our display is at the moment not connected, can only be the analog to digital converter. We can now also connect the display And let's see what is we find now. And you see now we found another one, 027. So that is the display. With this knowledge now we can uh, program all this into the code so that the devices can function correctly. Okay, the next thing we have to do is read out some uh, raw data which we need to know. And I want to check up this temperature sensors first. The temperature sensors are actually creating an analog signal via a voltage divider. So every of those uh, thermistors on the other end has a fixed resistor. So by changing the resistance due to change of temperature, the voltage divider here will change its value. And the analog signal which is at the middle of those two resistors there is then can be read out uh, by the analog uh, input here which is actually one directly read by the microcontroller so what we will do is we need two known reference points so for the first point I will actually hold this uh, sensor until the value does not change anymore and that will be my 36 degrees Celsius point and then for the second point we will actually use a glass full of iced water and uh, that one will be our 1 degree Celsius uh, reference point and in between it's more or less linear we can then calculate all the other temperatures so let's do that so to do this test I have just written a small sketch which is reading those two analog pins where the sensors are connected. We can open the serial monitor and you will see this is now raw data, probe 1 and probe 2 and the amount what uh, the raw data is reading. We are going now to hold the first sensor here, this is the battery sensor. I'm holding this with my hand. So once it once it is warmed up, uh, it will be our 36 degrees reference point. So that's my body temperature. The probe one value is rising, and once this is uh, over, we know what the 36 degrees uh, means in raw data. 423. That's 36 degrees. And now next I have here a glass full of ice water and I put the sensor into this so it will cool down quickly and you can already see probe 1 raw data is already dropped very quickly 100 and yeah, it's still falling so this is our 1 degree Celsius because we it will not be zero as we cannot freeze it of course 
0.38 that's about one degree celsius and the same thing we will do with the other probe uh, to see if they are different in build or if they're the same that is our second test and at our last test we are going to check out the shan sensor so for this always when you use a library certain library you can mostly find example sketches and that one what i am using in this case is the ina216 uh, we library and here we can find a sketch uh, which is uh, called triggered so that is always reading on demand i opened that sketch already and we can uh, open the serial monitor here and here you can see the readout so because we are reading on the low side we don't have bus voltage and a load voltage of course but we have our shunt voltage so yeah you can see this is millivolts three millivolts minus minus means uh, the battery is charging so this is working as well so here you can see the shunt sensor was reading slightly below 3 volts and multimeter also says 2.8 now. For the ADS1115 we don't need to make a test uh, because I have uh, running that one on the power wall and uh, just using this, the code from that one so we know that it's functioning already. So with all this knowledge uh, we can start and write some code. Okay, that was it for today. I hope you still find it interesting. So please comment, like, subscribe. Thank you and I'll see you next time.